Limbaugh was born on January 12, 1951, in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, to parents Rush Hudson Limbaugh II and Mildred Carolyn Limbaugh. He and his younger brother David were born into the Limbaugh family, his father was a lawyer and a United States fighter pilot who served in the China-Burma-India theater of World War II. His mother was from Searcy, Arkansas. The name Rush was originally chosen for his grandfather to honor the maiden name of a family member, Edna Rush. Limbaugh was partly of German ancestry. The family includes many lawyers, including his grandfather, father and brother, his uncle, Stephen N. Limbaugh Sr., was a federal judge in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Missouri. His cousin, Stephen N. Limbaugh Jr., is a judge in the same court, appointed by George W. Bush. Limbaugh's grandfather, Rush Limbaugh Sr., was a Missouri prosecutor, judge, special commissioner, member of the Missouri House of Representatives in the 1930s and longtime president of the Missouri Historical Society. In 1969, Limbaugh graduated from Cape Girardeau Central High School. He played football. During this time, at age 16 he worked his first radio job at KGMO, a local radio station in Cape Girardeau. He used the air name Rusty Sharp having found Sharp in a telephone book. Limbaugh later cited Chicago DJ Larry Lujak as a major influence on him, the only person I ever copied. Because of his parents' desire to see him attend college, he enrolled at Southeast Missouri State University but dropped out after two semesters. Biographer Zev Chaffetz believes that a large part of Limbaugh's life was dedicated to gaining his father's respect and approval. Following a stint as a ticket salesman for Major League Baseball's Kansas City Royals, in the mid-1980s, Limbaugh landed a job as an on-air host at KFBK in Sacramento, California, with the help of a radio executive friend. There, Limbaugh took over Morton Downey Jr.'s slot, and met with success when his ratings surpassed his predecessors. Less than a year later, Limbaugh became known as Sacramento's top radio host. In July 1988, after his success in Sacramento caught the attention of former ABC Radio President Edward McLaughlin, Limbaugh began a new show at WABC in New York City. He debuted just weeks after the Democratic National Convention, and just weeks before the Republican National Convention. Limbaugh's radio home in New York City was the talk formatted WABC, and this remained his flagship station for many years, even after Limbaugh moved to West Palm Beach, Florida, from where he broadcast his show. Limbaugh's show moved on January 1, 2014, to WABC's crosstown rival WOR, its current New York outlet. By 1990, Limbaugh had been on his Rush to Excellence tour, a series of personal appearances in cities nationwide, for two years. For the 45 shows he completed that year alone, he was estimated to make around $360,000. In November 1992, Democrat Bill Clinton was elected President of the United States. Limbaugh satirized the policies of Clinton and First Lady Hillary Clinton, as well as those of the Democratic Party. In the Republican Revolution when the party regained control of Congress in the 1994 midterm elections after several decades, the freshman Republican class awarded Limbaugh an honorary membership in their caucus believing he had a role in their success. In 1995, Limbaugh started selling a line of neckties under the brand No Boundaries Collection, designed by his wife Marta without themes, ties to politics, or ties to issues. Limbaugh complained about coverage of the line, which he said underrated the tie's radicalness, and said media descriptions were emblematic of their general inaccuracy. Sold in nearly 1,500 retail outlets by 1996, the brand sold more than $5 million worth in the first year. In 2000, Limbaugh rented the email list collected from the No Boundaries website to Rudy Giuliani's Senate campaign. The business dissolved along with his marriage to Marta but in 2012 the ties were still being sold by Thai Gal, Inc. for $15 each. In 2003, Limbaugh stated that he was addicted to pain medication, and sought treatment. In April 2006, Limbaugh turned himself in to authorities, on a warrant issued by the Palm Beach County State Attorney's Office, and was arrested, on a single charge of prescription fraud. His record was later expunged.
In 2013, news reports indicated that Cumulus Media, some of whose stations carried Limbaugh's program in certain major markets, including New York, Chicago, Dallas, Washington DC and Detroit, was considering dropping his show when its contract with Limbaugh expired at the end of that year, reportedly because the company believed that its advertising revenues had been hurt by listener reaction to controversial Limbaugh comments. Limbaugh himself said that the reports were overblown and that it was a matter of routine dollars and cents negotiations between Cumulus and his network syndication partner, Premier Networks, a unit of clear channel communications. Ultimately, the parties reached agreement on a new contract, with Limbaugh's show moving from its longtime flagship outlet in New York, the Cumulus-owned WABC, to the latter's crosstown rival, the Clear Channel-owned WOR, starting January 1, 2014, but remaining on the Cumulus-owned stations it was being carried on in other markets. In January 2021, Limbaugh called the GameStop short squeeze the most fascinating thing to happen in a long time and that the elites are bent out of shape that a bunch of average, ordinary users have figured out how to make themselves billionaires. Limbaugh's radio show aired for three hours each weekday beginning at noon Eastern Time on both AM and FM radio. The program was also broadcast worldwide on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Radio broadcasting shifted from AM to FM in the 1970s because of the opportunity to broadcast music in stereo with better fidelity. Limbaugh's show was first nationally syndicated in August 1988, on the AM radio band. Limbaugh's popularity paved the way for other conservative talk radio programming to become commonplace on AM radio. The show increased its audience in the 1990s to the extent that even some FM stations picked it up. AM's poor sound quality and lack of stereo make a talk show format like Limbaugh's preferable for FM radio. As of January 2019 about half of Limbaugh's affiliate stations are on the FM dial. In March 2006, WBAL in Baltimore became the first major market radio station in the country to drop Limbaugh's nationally syndicated radio program. In 2007, Talkers Magazine again named him number one in its Heavy Hundred Most Important Talk Show Hosts. Limbaugh frequently mentioned the IBE Excellence in Broadcasting Network, trademarked in 1990. In the beginning, his show was co-owned and first syndicated by Edward F. McLaughlin, former president of ABC, who founded EFM Media in 1988, with Limbaugh's show as his first product. In 1997, McLaughlin sold EFM to Jackor Communications, which was ultimately bought up by Clear Channel Communications. Limbaugh owned a majority of the show, which is syndicated by the Premier Radio Networks. According to a 2001 article in U.S. News & World Report, Limbaugh had an eight-year contract, at the rate of $31.25 million a year. In 2007, Limbaugh earned $33 million. A November 2008 poll by Zogby International found that Rush Limbaugh was the most trusted news personality in the nation, garnering 12.5% of poll responses. Limbaugh signed a $400 million, eight-year contract in 2008 with what was then Clear Channel Communications, making him the highest-paid broadcaster on terrestrial radio. On August 2, 2016, Limbaugh signed a four-year extension of the 2008 contract. At the announcement of the extension, Premier Radio Networks and iHeartMedia announced that his show experienced audience growth with 18% growth in adults 25 to 54, 27% growth with 25 to 54 women, and ad revenue growth of 20% year over year. In 2018, Limbaugh was the world's second behind Howard Stern, highest paid radio host, reportedly earning $84.5 million. On January 5, 2020, Limbaugh renewed his contract again. Though media reports said it was a long-term renewal, with no length specified, according to Donald Trump it was a four-year deal. Regular guest host Ken Matthews was also selected a Talkers Magazine, Heavy 100. Limbaugh had a syndicated half-hour television show from 1992 through 1996, produced by Roger Ailes. The show discussed many of the topics on his radio show, and was taped in front of an audience. Rush Limbaugh said he loved doing his radio show, but not a TV show. In his first New York Times bestseller, Limbaugh described himself as conservative, and was critical of broadcasters in many media outlets for claiming to be objective. 
He called for the adoption of core conservative philosophies in order to ensure the survival of the Republican Party. Limbaugh, a proponent of American exceptionalism, often criticized politicians he believed reject this notion seeing them as unpatriotic or anti-American. Limbaugh dismissed the concept of consent in sexual relations. He viewed consent as the magic key to the left. In 2014, Limbaugh criticized a policy at Ohio State University encouraging students to obtain verbal consent, saying, how many of you guys, have learned that no, means, yes, if you know how to spot it? The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee used these statements to advocate a boycott of Limbaugh's show and advertisers, asserting that the statements were tantamount to an endorsement of sexual assault. Limbaugh denied this, and his spokesman Brian Glicklick and lawyer Patricia Glazer threatened a defamation lawsuit against the DCCC. According to spokesperson Emily Bittner, the DCCC did not receive any correspondence from Limbaugh or his attorney. Rush had been an outspoken critic of what he saw as leniency towards criminal drug use in the United States. On his television show on October 5, 1995, Limbaugh stated, too many whites are getting away with drug use and illegal drug trafficking. Limbaugh proposed that the racial disparity in drug enforcement could be fixed if authorities increased detection efforts, conviction rates and jail time for whites involved in illegal drugs. He defended mandatory minimum sentencing as an effective tool against the crack cocaine epidemic of the 1980s. Limbaugh accused advocates of legalization of non-medical cannabis in the United States of hypocrisy due to their advocacy of tobacco control and backlash against electronic cigarettes, and compared the advocates for its legalization in Colorado to big tobacco. Limbaugh's past comments on drug users were highlighted by numerous media outlets after his own stint in a drug rehabilitation facility in 2003. Limbaugh was critical of environmentalism and climate science. He rejected the relationship between CFCs and depletion of the ozone layer, saying the scientific evidence did not support them. Limbaugh argued against the scientific consensus on climate change saying it was just a bunch of scientists organized around a political proposition and argued that projections of climate change were the product of ideologically motivated computer simulations without the proper support of empirical data, a claim which has been widely debunked. Limbaugh used the term, environmentalist wacko, both when referring to left-leaning environmental advocates, and when referring to more mainstream climate scientists and other environmental scientists and advocates with whom he disagreed. Limbaugh opposed pollution credits, including a carbon cap and trade system, as a way to disproportionately benefit major American investment banks, particularly Goldman Sachs, and claimed that it would destroy the American national economy. Limbaugh was critical of feminism, which he viewed as advancing only liberals and not women in general. He has criticized Democratic congressmen calling for more women in Congress as hypocritical due to their opposition to female Republican candidates. He has also regularly used the term, feminazi, described by the New York Times in 1994 as one of his favorite epithets for supporters of women's rights. According to Limbaugh in 1992, for certain feminists, the most important thing in life is ensuring that as many abortions as possible occur. He also used the term referring to the half-million large 2017 Women's March as the deranged feminazi march. He credited his friend Tom Hazlitt, a professor of law and economics at George Mason University, with coining the term. In 1993, Limbaugh supported the North American Free Trade Agreement NAFTA, joking in response to claims that it would lead to a transfer of unskilled labor to Mexico that this would leave the United States with only better jobs. Rush Limbaugh strongly opposed Barack Obama during the 2008 presidential election, and spread false claims that Obama was a non-citizen not born in the United States. Limbaugh was consistently supportive of the candidacy and presidency of Donald Trump, although he endorsed Ted Cruz during the 2016 Republican Party presidential primaries and took issue with Trump's treatment of Cruz. Limbaugh later criticized Cruz's hesitance to endorse Trump after his nomination at the 2016 Republican National Convention, comparing it to Ted Kennedy's lukewarm support of Jimmy Carter at the 1980 Democratic National Convention. 
After the election he became supportive of deep state conspiracy theories, claiming that the United States had entered a cold civil war in which the Democratic Party was attempting to illegitimately overturn the election results and that it was part of a trend of Democrats contesting elections beginning with the 2000 Florida election recount intended to eventually eliminate free elections in the United States. After the House of Representatives commenced a formal impeachment inquiry against President Trump due to the scandal over a 2019 telephone call to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky pressuring his government to prosecute 2020 Democratic primary candidate Joe Biden shortly after a freeze of military aid, Limbaugh argued that the two events were unrelated since Trump had made a decision to withhold military funds a month in advance. He additionally claimed that Trump's desire for the Ukrainian government to prosecute Biden was legally justified by a 1999 mutual legal assistance treaty with Ukraine and was following the law to the letter when it comes to unearthing the longstanding corruption that has swirled in Ukraine and allegedly involves powerful Democrats like Joe Biden. During the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States, Limbaugh asserted that the virus was the common cold. Limbaugh said on his radio show on February 24, 2020, I'm dead right on this. The coronavirus is the common cold, folks, alleging it was being weaponized to bring down Trump. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention state that the virus causing coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-19, is not the same as the coronaviruses that commonly circulate among humans and cause mild illness, like the common cold. Limbaugh's statement was called, wildly irresponsible. Limbaugh married on four occasions, the first three ending in divorce. He did not have any children. He was first married at the age of 26 to Roxy Maxine McNeely, a sales secretary at radio station WHB in Kansas City, Missouri. The couple married at the Centenary United Methodist Church in Limbaugh's hometown of Cape Girardeau on September 24, 1977. McNeely filed for divorce in March 1980, citing incompatibility. They were formally divorced on July 10, 1980. In 1983, Limbaugh married Michelle Sixta, a college student and usherette at the Kansas City Royal Stadium Club. They divorced in 1990, and she remarried the following year. On May 27, 1994, Limbaugh married Marta Fitzgerald, a 35-year-old aerobics instructor whom he met on the online service CompuServe in 1990. They married at the house of U.S. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, who officiated. The couple separated on June 11, 2004. Limbaugh announced his divorce on the air. It was finalized in December 2004. In September 2004, Limbaugh became romantically involved with then-CNN news anchor Darren Kagan, the relationship ended in February 2006. Limbaugh lived in Palm Beach from 1996 until his death in 2021. A friend recalls that Limbaugh fell in love with Palm Beach, after visiting her over Memorial Day weekend in 1995. Unlike New York, Florida does not tax income, the stated reason Limbaugh moved his residence and established his Southern Command. He dated Catherine Rogers, a party planner from Florida, for three years, the couple married on June 5, 2010. During the wedding reception after the ceremony, Elton John entertained the wedding guests for a reported $1 million fee, however, Limbaugh himself denied that the $1 million figure was accurate on his September 7, 2010, radio show. Limbaugh, a cigar and former cigarette smoker, was diagnosed with advanced lung cancer on January 20, 2020, after first experiencing shortness of breath on January 12, he had previously questioned the link between smoking and cancer deaths, arguing that smokers were not at any greater risk than people who eat carrots. He announced the diagnosis on air during his radio show on February 3, conceding that he would miss airtime to undergo treatment, he stated that he planned to continue the program as normally and competently as he could while undergoing treatment. On October 20, 2020, Limbaugh announced that treatment had been ineffectual at containing the cancer, that his diagnosis was terminal, and that he had been given a time frame on when he should expect to die. In his final broadcast of 2020, he said, I wasn't expected to make it to October, and then to November, and then to December. And yet, here I am, and today, got some problems, but I'm feeling pretty good today. Limbaugh died on February 17, 2021, at the age of 70.
According to his wife, Catherine Rogers Limbaugh, his death was attributed to complications of his lung cancer.